we need to do all of our steps. So we've done the requirements verification piece at the top. And you only do these if you're asked, just as a side note, right? So you only um, verify if asked. If asked to do so. But we've done that. So now it's time to run all the steps. So step one, we need to figure out whether the caffeine therapy was effective in lowering the death or disability rate for the premature infants at alpha equals 0.01 level significance using the p-value. All right, so the hardest part about these problems is actually figuring out what your null and alternative hypotheses are. Now remember, group one is our caffeine group right here. Okay, so if group one is the caffeine group, then we want group one, the proportion from group one, to compare to the proportion from group two. And these don't have hats on them because they're the actual proportions of all preemies that would benefit from these therapies or um, would be in the placebo group versus in the caffeine group. And if you'll notice, one thing that's in chapter 11 that's a little bit easier is it's always like this. It's just P1, P2, P1, P2, P1, P2. Like there's no numbers in anywhere. You're not looking through the problem trying to figure out, you know, was it less than 40% or anything like that? Never. It's just a question of what is that second value? Because the null hypothesis always has equals. So that's easy. And so now the real trick is trying to figure out which way I have to go with that second value. And it's all in the words up here. Was it effective in lowering? Was caffeine effective in lowering the death and disability rate? Actually, I should change that to, the, sorry, the supplemental oxygen rate. There was originally a different data set here. Sorry about that. So it's, is it, was it effective in lowering the supplemental oxygen rate for the premature infants? All right. You want caffeine to be effective in lowering. You want the caffeine group to be lower than the placebo group. And so that means that you want this to be a less than right there because you want the caffeine group to be lower than the placebo group for needing supplemental oxygen. All right, step two, alpha is easy. Everybody loves step two. It's always given to you in the problem somewhere, so there it is. Step three, we want Z0, and there's a little trick to this. I'm not going to have you do the whole formula. Over here, I state just use technology because the formula itself gets really complicated. You actually have a separate P hat to figure out. That's not P1 hat nor P2 hat. They would have to be figured out, and then it's complement figured out, and then you put it under a square root and all this jazz. We're not going to do it. We're just not going to do it. We're just going to use technology. So all we're going to do is get StatCrunch and or our calculator to do this. Now on the calculator, I'll do that first because it shows the two prop Z test right there. So let me show this to you. So in the calculator, you go to stat, you go to tests, you go to two prop Z test, which is number six. And you enter your values. X1 for us was the placebo group for one, which was 350. It's right there. That's why we figured that out for the first question. So 350, 963, if I get them right, 447, 954. And now down here, it's wanting us to choose P1 not equal to P2. Is that what your alternative is? P1 less than P2 or P1 greater than P2? So the P1 you can see is over on the left side because that's this P1 right here for the alternative. So it's saying which one have you got? P1 less than P2, P1 not equal to P2, P1 greater. Well, we actually want the not equal to one, which is in the middle. So if that's not dark for you, go over there and press enter to make it dark. And then move down to calculate. And Z0 is the number at the very top. It's negative 4.6686. You can just write it. You don't need to put the formula with it or anything. I'm going to put 4.669. There we have it. Step three is done. Step four, we need to draw a picture. Well, the p-value comes out of that right there. But we can also get this with StatCrunch. And I should show you StatCrunch anyway, so let's do that. 
All right, so in StatCrunch, you go to Stat, and it's the same place you went for proportion stats before, except this time we're gonna choose two sample because we have two groups. You choose two sample with summary. It's always with summary for proportion stats. The other three pieces we don't ever use in this class. So you're gonna choose with summary, and then you're going to choose the, or tell it the number of successes, which was 350, 963. It's the same information that the calculator wanted. Make sure you choose the right thing. And now we're doing a hypothesis test. Now here you have to tell it P1 minus P2 equals zero. Okay, so let me show you that. So another way to write this would be to subtract. Ooh, sorry about that. Sorry about that, my dog barked. So if we subtract P2 from both sides, you would have H0 would be P1 minus P2. And then if you subtracted P2 from both sides, all you'd have left over here is zero. So it'd be equal to zero. And then the alternative to that would be P1 minus P2 because right, you're subtracting P2 from both sides of this equation, and it would be less than zero because all that would be left over here is zero. All right, so when StatCrunch is having you choose that, that's fine, right? It's the same choice you were making in the calculator. It just looks a little different. So you're going to always choose zero for our course, and then you, down here you choose less than because it's the left-tailed test, just like it was for with the calculator. And then we can go click on compute. And there you can see the same values. You can see your Z stat right there. There's your test statistic. You can see all your X's and N's right over here. And then you can see your P value, except you can't. What's happening is your P value is so low that StatCrunch basically gives up and says, look, this is smaller than 0 0.0001. That's all you really need to know because your alpha is definitely going to be bigger than that, right? Whereas the calculator actually gives you a value. So this is one time where the calculator is a little nicer in some respects, right? So we're definitely drawing a left-tailed picture. So we would follow the pictures from our left tailed right tailed two tailed test but z0 is nowhere near this big z0 is super tiny it's off in the tail at negative 4.6 so it's going to be way over here so z0 is negative 4.669 and our p value up here you have to choose if you have stat crunch you just say your p value is less than 0 0.001 if you have a calculator you can actually say um, I'll put it in blue here. The p-value is, and you can write it in scientific notation, 1.5 e negative 6, or you can say 0 0.0000015, right? Because it moves the decimal six spots over to the left. Like that. So either way you want to write it. If you want to just say p-value is less than 0 0.0, oh, it was 30, sorry, it was even smaller than that. 0, 0, 0, 0001. That's stat crunch. That's fine. If you want to write it in scientific notation from the calculator, that's fine. If you want to write it out from the calculator, that's fine. Would any one of those three will do? All right. Now, oh, and when you look at the calculator, don't get confused. The P1 hat and the P2 hat are the same values we already found. P hat is part of that formula, so we kind of ignore that. The only thing we're interested in is Z0 at the top and the p-value right below it. That's the parts that we care about. And similarly with stat crunch, what we care about is the z stat right here and the p-value right there. That's the parts that we care about over on the right. All right, now we have to make a decision. Well, we are going to reject h naught. <laughs> no question about it. We're going to reject h naught because our p-value is so low that it's less than 0 0.0001. And that is smaller than alpha, which was 0 0.01, right? So no matter what your p-value is, it's really small. Or you could write, if you have a calculator, you could say, oh, because my p-value, which was 0 0.0000015, 
is crazy less than that alpha, which is 0.01. So if you want to use the actual value, that's fine. If you want to use what the stack crunch gives you, that's a logic argument. You're saying, look, if my pay value is less than 0 0.0001, then it's definitely less than alpha because alpha is only 0 0.01. This is larger than that value. That makes sense. As a matter of fact, because of the calculator, we know what that value is and we can tell it's way less than 0 0.0001. StackCrunch is interesting. A lot of computer programs do what StackCrunch is doing. They kind of give up. They just kind of tell you it's crazy small, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> and so that's all it's telling you is that it's crazy small. All right, so now we will write our conclusion. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim. that the caffeine therapy was effective. And sorry about the typo in that. I'll fix that for future semesters. But it was effective in lowering the supplemental oxygen rate. Um, I'm going to write it over here. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of space. Lowering the supplemental oxygen rate. Right, the need for extra oxygen for these babies for premature infants. It's the same type of conclusion we've been writing since chapter 10, since section 10.1, right? There is sufficient evidence because we rejected H0. And then you write what your claim was in terms of H1, the alternative hypothesis but of course using the context of the situation.